Blessed, welcome back to another episode of the My Two Cents. Quick chat, the big bad show where we give you the latest updates on some of the happenings in Jamaica. Now, today's happenings kind of based off of the last quick chat we're going to see. And we are going to touch on the subject matter then. Now, and the subject matter we're going to talk about it named Andrew Holness in a further hot water. Now, before I go into anything, I have to make you understand this. See, because a lot of people seem to strive from the negative. Everything in life is a balance. So guess what? Before I go in, the main reason why I bring to the show to you. See some good thing here, yeah? where well, the labor right them I do. Under this system, Madam Speaker, the real benefit is that we will have one set of patient records from birth until your demise. Begins with the philosophy of one patient, one record. It allows shorter transaction time and less transaction cost. Wherever patient goes, the record will follow. No more paper-based records, which will improve treatment in terms of diagnosis, the patient history, what they're allergic to, what procedures they did before, and allow our medical team to prescribe in a much faster time for early recovery. So this is real modernization, the first in the Caribbean, Jamaica being the first, and ultimately both the staff and the patients are the better part. We're at the Buff Bay District Health Centre where we are about to unveil the premises. One, two, four, three. <laughs> so welcome to our waiting area. This is where the clients would come and sit and then we would usher them to their respective areas. I like the camera, the security camera as well. Very, very impressive. Our assessment room, our breastfeeding room a midwife office, public health nurse's office, or isolation room. So the trauma bay is for emergency cases? Emergency cases. What's your opening hours? 8 till 5. Where does someone go if they have a trauma case outside of the bay? Okay. This new one is equipped with a X-ray. We were given a ambulance. This is our asthma bay. This is for the female staff and the male staff bathroom. Well, here you have it. You have the old, which was serving a purpose, very important purpose. And you have the new. Turn and look at the new. The, the new, new Buffet Health, Health Center. Center. All right. Now, those are some of the good things with the labor right them. Binado. Just go over Dr. Christopher Tufton page, and we see the labor right them did actually do some work because based on the amount of what politicians do when they're going to power we have to highlight whatever little root work good them do because me only know say politician is all about themselves so if them do something good we should highlight that just as much as how we highlight the bad but what are the odds say as soon as they don't do the good election around the corner on a salty man because even though the mother some work and we're grateful for it, we have to also remember. Say so they don't usually do anything until it's election time. True them know that Jamaican people don't focus on consistency. Them focus on constituency. So I'm going to see what do now. Let's see if they will be consistent. Because we don't know the level where consistency as it relates to politicians lie unintended in Jamaica. Now, this video I'm about to play is not my personal opinion. It's just some information I feel like I'm supposed to share. And also, I have to make a note straight. The views and opinions expressed in this particular video is not necessarily the views and our opinions of the My Two Cents pod class. See, this is not a condemnation. This is not a witch hunt for no political party. If this was Mark Golden, same flame. So, I just want to know, watch objectively for understand and not just to comment. I find the video interesting and I feel like every Jamaican should have watched this. Whether you live a yard 
are you in a diaspora? So I decided to bring that specific episode yeah? Based on, I don't know if I time in, I don't know who go back to dig up this But somebody sent a video to me And I found it very interesting And I feel like I should have bring it to the item See, now this video is a video where Zara Burton have a program named 18 Degrees North Where she feature Prime Minister Andrew Holness years ago on it as it relates to the same allegations of corruption where the integrity commission are bring up on the prime minister and mark you is a lengthy video i think it's over 25 minutes but if you're really interested in the future of your country and what's happening in your country as it relates to now and the future take a look at this every poor man must fill in the house he became jamaica's newest prime minister despite controversy about his big house join us in a partnership for prosperity. We uncover a trail of property purchases and ask, is Andrew Honus paying his part? Is that why you didn't pay the property taxes on the home? What the Prime Minister didn't want you to know before the election. And later, Honus sounds the warning on corruption to his new cabinet. Corruption will not be tolerated in this government. But does his own record raise questions when it comes to awarding public contracts? When each side is in government, there are uncomfortable levels of awarding of contracts to persons who are either political supporters, campaign financiers, or other connected parties. We reveal how Honus signed off on taxpayer money for a contract to his associates on this episode of 18 Degrees North. We begin our show with Jamaica's newest Prime Minister, Andrew Honus. During the 2016 general elections, his house became front and centre. The public, and perhaps more so the ruling People's National Party, they wanted to know why a St. Lucian company owned his house and where he got the money, since news reports had put its value at about two million US dollars, a figure Honus has not confirmed. After all, Honus had been a politician most of his professional life, didn't come from money, and his salary at the time was just over 60,000 US dollars each year, not counting allowances. Honus answered several of the questions asked, but we at 18 Degrees North had others. What we found was an interesting series of property purchases and an uneven playing field when it comes to personal tax matters. It also shed light on the relationship between Jamaican politicians and their associates in the awarding of public contracts. We're staying right here in Jamaica at 18 degrees north and 77 degrees west. The Labour Party believe that every poor man must build his castle. Every poor man must build him big house. And we now grudge your feet. We are going to help you to achieve that. That is why we say education be free, health be free, and we must make the place secure so you can live and enjoy yourself. This is the house, built on three quarters of an acre, complete with stone-cut wall in the exclusive Beverly Hills neighborhood just outside Kingston. It's a huge upgrade from where Jamaica's newest prime minister and then opposition leader Andrew Honus says he was born. I was born in a two-bedroom board house at 56 Cumberland Road in a Spanish town. My father is still a farmer and my mother is a retired civil servant. Property records show that Beverly Hills land was purchased by a St. Lucian-based company, Admat Incorporated, for 300,000 US dollars in 2011 three months before Honus became Prime Minister of Jamaica for the first time, and when he was Minister of Education, there's no mortgage listed. In a statement, Honus says he's the sole director of ADMAT and a shareholder, along with his two sons, Adam and Matthew. Honus says he got the money from funds in his accounts at two of Jamaica's investment banks, and used his savings, salary, loans and credit from suppliers established through his wife, who is a real estate developer, to build the house costing him approximately $52 million, or around 525,000 US. He says a St. Lucian structure was used for estate planning. His attorney, Patrick Bailey, says there's that and the additional potential benefit of avoiding transfer taxes. If the house at Beverly Hills is the only asset and he was selling it, 
it would simply sell the company, sell the shares. The company would have its shareholding transferred from him and his children to the new purchasers. Whereas the title would remain unchanged because the new purchaser would be the owners of Admat and be the owners of the property. So in that case, there's no transfer from one entity to another. So you save on transfer tax and stamp duties and those sorts of things. Civil society activist Carol Narcisse says the leader of the country shouldn't be trying to avoid taxes. Especially if you're an, a, a prime minister and you're telling your citizens that they need to conform to the regulatory environment that you have designed, that you do not think you can adhere to because it is inimical to your interest to adhere to it or inimical to the interest of your children's future to adhere to it then there is a major um, you know there's a there's a major inconsistency there that you need to explain join us in a partnership for prosperity let's change jamaica for the better choose prosperity does he own other entities in there in Admat? In Admat? Yes. I think he has at least one other property in Admat. And where is that? Um, that is in somewhere in the, in the Arcadia area. Right. And that's right. considered land or also? Come as an apartment. Actually, he's now in the process of selling that unit. He owes suppliers, because suppliers uh, gave him credit for the house he's building in, um, in, in, in Beverly Hills. And the source of funds for that was what? That one, I, 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 I can't, can't recall all of those details, but I seem to remember that he has always used the house that he, that house that he lives in and gets loans and that sort of thing. We checked the title for the property where Bailey says both Honus and his wife lived at the time of our interview and found no additional loans or mortgages other than those originally taken out in 2002 when they bought the house for 7 million Jamaican dollars, around 144,000 US dollars back then. So you were satisfied then with the source of the funds in both cases? Oh, absolutely, 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 absolutely. He saved in US stocks and, and amongst his portfolio. So he was saving because these are savings. Is that savings from him alone or him and his wife? I don't know that level of personal detail. <laughs> That's, that, that would be, yeah, I don't know that level of. Of what you know, is there any evidence? I know of nothing, I have known nothing else that he owns in relation to um, Admat. Okay. Like he, he currently owns the other. We checked the title for the Acadia property and found that it was indeed purchased by the same St. Lucian company Admat Incorporated in 2008, again when Honus was Minister of Education. The price tag, 16 million Jamaican dollars, around 219,000 US back then, and again, no mortgage was listed. Further, we also checked whether Admat owned additional properties and found one more. A half-acre lot, also bought in Beverly Hills on Wake of Close in February 2009, also when Honus was Minister of Education, price tag, around 15 million Jamaican dollars, almost 173,000 US dollars, and again, no mortgage listed. So you've never heard of this way to close property before today? Um, let me put it this way. I have never handled. And when I look at the transfer, I see the names of lawyers who I know. And he's entitled to have more than one lawyer. <laughs> we all have to eat. So all told, when it comes to properties, there's the Great House Boulevard home that Honus and his wife bought with a mortgage while Honus was a mere member of parliament. And in the four years he was Minister of Education, earning the equivalent of around 60,000 US dollars per year, or 90,000 with allowances, there was the Arcadia apartment, no mortgage listed. The land at Wakecliffe Close in Beverly Hills, no mortgage listed. The land for the Shenstone Beverly Hills house he's building, no mortgage listed. And around 525,000 US dollars spent building the house in the three years after Honus's Jamaica Labour Party lost the election in 2011. Honus, through a member of his team, said he wouldn't comment on the source of funds for any of his properties before the election, but even after, he didn't. He also said he would make his financial statement public at the end of March 2016, but he didn't. Despite several calls to Juliet Honus, a property developer, chartered accountant and newly elected member of parliament, she didn't get back to us. 
What about property taxes? No man, he, pay, he has to pay property tax. At the time of our initial checks in the two weeks before the election, the house in Beverly Hills had an outstanding balance since 2013 on the tax administration's website. Amount? About $174,000 or US $1,400 approximately. Property taxes on the Waycliffe closed land in Beverly Hills were listed as not having been paid since 2009, a total of about $175,000 or US around $1,400. All in, Honus or his entities were listed at the time as owing almost $413,000 Jamaican dollars, around $3,400 US dollars. It wasn't clear if there were any amounts owing for the apartment at Arcadia Drive. Caroline Hay, former deputy director of public prosecution, says, in general, no leader should be backed upon their taxes. We did not ask her specifically about Honus. No public official ought to be behind on their taxes. You are in a position when you're a public official in a position of trust, and one would imagine an example to the nation as to how we, what values we want in positions of leadership. Days after 18 Degrees North brought it to Honus's attention and before the election, the tax administration's website reflected zero balances for the two Beverly Hills properties at Shenstone Drive and Wakelift Close. However, taxes on the house he owns with his wife were still listed as owing as of our last check, March 18, 2016 even as he became Prime Minister of Jamaica for a second time. That I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Jamaica. Coming up on 18 Degrees North, too close for comfort? How Andrew Honest signed off on taxpayers' money for a contract to his associates. Mm -hmm. 18 Degrees North just uncovered a trail of property purchases linked to Jamaica's newest Prime Minister, Andrew Honus. Now see how that trail led us down another path, that of government contracts awarded to his associates. Corruption will not be tolerated in this government. The property at Waycliffe Close in Beverly Hills remains an open lot today. As it turns out, the owner, Andrew Honus's Abmat Incorporated, applied to the National Environmental Planning Agency to build townhouses in 2010, but that application was turned down. Representing Abmat in this application was one Robert Garvin. And Robert Garvin is not a director in any way, shape, or form of Abmat. No, but he's not, he's not, he's not. But why would Robert Garvin's name then appear on an application to the land development? I mean, the. Because he's acting as agent, he's in the process. <laughs> That's not unusual. According to company's office records, Robert Garvin is or was a director of other entities affiliated with Andrew or Juliet Honess. Positive Jamaica Foundation Limited, Sunshine Mobile, West Central St. Andrew Trust Limited, Omega Bridge Finance, and the now removed Delito Taxi Service. Who is um Robert Garvin? Garvin? Robert Garvin. Never met the name, never heard the name. But I, I do remember positive. But I did set up Positive Jamaica, I remember that. Right, but he's yeah. one. Yeah. Positive Jamaica is um, mm. in part a director by um, Garvin. I, I know he was a director of... of and by the yourself, way, one more thing. Up. What about the fact that Garvin used this address, 28 Herb McKinley? Because this is my address, it's precisely what I'm saying. You're a 28 Herb McKinley. No? I know, yeah. so why Robert Garvin used it? And because we set up the company here. Garvin, I'm not saying that. I don't remember the name. Separately, Robert Garvin is also listed as the director of Westkin Construction, along with one Donovan Simpson. Garvin used the address 25 Dominica Drive while setting up Westcon, the same address he and Honus used when registering West Central St. Andrew Trust Limited. Government records show Westkin Construction as receiving 14 government contracts, totaling 28.5 million Jamaican dollars or around 386,000 US dollars. This was between 2006 and 2009, even as Honus or his wife shared directorships with Garvin on four entities. 12 of the 14 contracts were under the JLP government with which Honus has a career-long affiliation. Nine of the 14 list zero or only one tender. 10 of the 14 were granted by the Minister of Education when Andrew Honus was minister 
and by the National Works Agency and Social Development Commission for work in Honus's constituency. Honus even instructed the Social Development Commission to pay Weskin Construction just under one and a half million Jamaican dollars or around US $21,000 back then. He signed the document himself. There was only one bidder for cleaning, bushing and trimming of the roadways in Honus's constituency of West Central St. Andrew and no procurement committee approval. Payment was requested by Honus December 20th, 2007 and paid promptly on the same day. When contacted in a general sense, the current Social Development Commission head, Dwayne Vernon, said, while not the norm, it is possible to have a request and payment on the same day, especially when there's a contract in place with stated payment dates. Vernon, who didn't address this contract specifically, also said, the SDC does not procure for constituencies. This is the prerogative of the MP and his or her project officer. Civil society activist Carol Narcisse says, awarding of government contracts in Jamaica has been a long-standing cause for concern. When each side is in government, um, they, there are um, un, un, uncomfortable levels of awarding of contracts to persons who are either political supporters, um, um, campaign financiers, or other connected parties. We asked Honus whether he declared his relationship with Garvin while contracts were being awarded to Westcom Construction, but he didn't get back to us. We called Garvin, but he said he couldn't talk at the time and he didn't answer our text message. When contacted, Garvin's partner in Westkin Construction, Donovan Simpson, he tried to distance himself from the inner workings of the company. I don't know where are these products. I don't know how much I'm collecting. So you didn't benefit from these contracts, that's what you're saying? No. Even though his name is not on the um, the filing, really? is Andrew Honus a part of this company? No, not to my knowledge. No, man, he's not a part of it. Do you know if Garvin is a friend of Andrew Honus? Yes, yeah, man, they are friends. They are very close. They are friends. They are friends. Andrew went in politics, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I met him at, at, at Seattle's office because Robert and Seattle were, 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 were very close also. You know. Okay. So the first time I saw Andrew is when Robert invited me to the Seattle's office in New Kingsway. We searched but could find no record of Honus declaring his relationship with Robert Garvin or Donovan Simpson. And the Office of the Contractor General would only say that we should request an investigation, which we did. When asked in a general sense, and not about Honus specifically, Caroline Hay says these kinds of relationships should be declared. In the procurement rules and guidelines that I've read, there's been a concern about whether there is a connection either directly, meaning you have an interest in a company that's bidding for public assets and public benefit, or indirectly, meaning it's in the name of a wife, in the name of a girlfriend, in the name of a child, in the name of an associate. This is a duty of our staff and any other public officers and officials directly or indirectly involved in the procurement process, especially in the preparation of bidding documents, evaluation, contract negotiations, contract management and payments to declare any potential conflicts of interest. Whether Honus declared his relationship with Garvin remains unclear. However, Bailey, his attorney, is adamant that all assets associated with Andrew Honus were declared. In every case, everything that he has owned from the time that he is, from even the time he set up Adma, going back to 2001, everything has been declared. We checked with the Integrity Commission, but no one ever got back to us. Information submitted is usually confidential. The law that governs it explicitly states that these declarations cannot be made public and if they are made public whoever makes them public is subject to a fine of over a million dollars right these declarations of assets need to be brought under the ambit of the access to information act so that we can request to see and be given or given a good reason why we can't be given in jamaica Breaches of the rules governing the awarding of government contracts carry a possible fine of $1,000 or around eight U.S. dollars and or three months in prison. See what happens when we try to get answers from Andrew Honus on the campaign trail. Can you give me a 
sense of who Robert Garvin is? That's next on 18 Degrees North. Jamaica's newest Prime Minister, Andrew Honus, may have wrested control from the People's National Party in part because of his 10-point tax plan. During the election campaign, though, there were skeptics. Critics charged, how was he going to plug the millions in lost revenues in U.S. dollar terms when his plan would essentially eliminate income tax on those earning the equivalent of around 12,000 U.S. dollars or less? Honus's plan was to spur spending and generate more revenue from consumption tax while raising taxes on high-end earners. We caught up with Honus on the campaign trail. We asked him what else he had up his sleeve and why at the time was he listed as being behind on his property taxes. Where is the economy going? Have you done any analysis of your tax plan and what economic growth is going to look like in your first yeah, we've done, year? Uh, I wouldn't want to give you a specific figure. But your what analysis will, must have produced something that is tangible for the people to understand. Yeah, but I didn't say I would give you that figure. But it has produced a figure? Of course. Okay. Otherwise, why would we do that? Give me a general yeah, sense will, of where I, we have I, on the low end, the top end. I would say to you that if you're going to talk about economic growth, you should be above 3%. Okay. That's a fair yeah. statement to me. Right. Let's talk so. about some of the other taxes that you, uh, tax incentives and lower rates. Yeah. And so in I think general, there was mention of some transfer taxes yeah. as so well. In general, and you want to, our tax plan is to reduce um, transaction taxes. You know, um, a part of economic growth is to get the velocity of transactions um, increasing, um, and particularly in construction and real estate because those are major employment areas. So we will bring to the levels to which we had them before um, our uh, transfer tax and stamp duties mm -hmm. um, and estate taxes as well. You seem to don't like taxes too much because- Absolutely. Yeah. The, 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 I'm, a, I'm a small government, um, free enterprise mm -hmm. person. I believe that markets work best mm -hmm. and taxes are distortionary. Okay. Is that why you didn't pay the property taxes on the home? No, my property taxes are paid. On the THS website, when we did the valuation numbers for your properties, the outstanding taxes are there. No, my, my taxes are paid. When we looked, there was your Great House Boulevard property. Um, there was your property that's owned by Admat, which you say you're the sole director of. Mm -hmm. And then there's another property that we actually found under Admat as well, up at Wycliffe Close. Mm -hmm. um, all, well, all three were outstanding. And then we um, saw that at Wycliffe Close, taxes seem to have been outstanding since 2009. Okay. What about the other property though, at uh, Wycliffe Close? That I would have to check on. I mean, that's been there for a little while, so I'd have to check on. But, but I don't want to, to, to distract from the message. No, but you are the person that's saying that you don't necessarily love taxes, yeah? Yeah. And but, so but, you, are the lead, you, are, mm -hmm. you are a leader of this country, mm -hmm. potentially the premier leader of this country come next week. And so I'm asking you the question, as the leader of a country, do you believe that your taxes should have been more up-to-date no, than the I'm record reflects? Yeah. What I'm saying to you, mm -hmm. um, from my best recollection, mm -hmm. um, I've paid my taxes. Now, if, if, if it is mm -hmm. that they are um, outstanding, mm -hmm. it's not an issue for the pay them. Okay. I'm not hiding from taxes. Mm -hmm. But Admat is designed for you to avoid potential no, no, estate taxes no, and transfer taxes. You're no, not no, it's designed for estate planning purposes. For estate yes, planning yes, purposes, yes. that means basically that you avoid some sort of taxes. And I'm saying, does it look good for a no, leader I, of a I'm country? Not, I'm not clear mm -hmm. that it's, when we set it up, it was never to avoid any kind of taxes. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's not likely that I would be able to sell everything. Mm -hmm. It was set up merely mm -hmm. as a way of holding assets. So it's a holding company. Mm -hmm. That's it. But but in any event, you know, let's be clear. Um, any citizen of any country is permitted. Mm -hmm. um, it's not illegal right. to establish. And many persons have. Done. No doubt. I'm not talking about yeah. the legality. I'm more talking about does it look good for a leader to be trying to set up their situation so that no. they avoid paying no, tax? No, 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 no. No, any, any company can, I think, um, avoid um, be in, being in a situation 
look, but my view on the matter is this. Um, you should plan your estate and plan for taxes the best way possible. You just said a while ago um, that you, there, you don't see a sense where you would be able to sell everything. What's no, everything? No. What's everything? Don't buy, you've mentioned two properties. I mean, right. Yeah. Here's Wakelift Close, yeah, right, but, which is an open I'll land you, right now. Look, we'll talk again. No, one thing I wanted to I ask think you about. Gone, you've gone hold on, hold on. No, hold on, Mr. Honest. <laughs> Mr. Honest, I must ask you a question. Can you give me a sense of who Robert Garvin is? He's the company secretary, but what's the issue? He's a company secretary. What's your relationship with him? So this is where we bring 18 Degrees North to a close for this week. Join us online, look us up on Twitter or on Facebook, send us your comments. We're there to bring you Caribbean stories that have global impact. I'm going to make an illustration of after TVG with that program here. Yeah. Pressure him as it relates to him, taxes and all these things and the information as to the whereabouts of how him achieved him riches and successfully got an injunction to block TVG from questioning ever again about any of finances or anything. And mark you, remember me as I tell you, say a lot of these media houses, them politically aligned. So even the show you might look like integrity to them, can be a personal attack because while they made that them iron cross all of them tea when it come to the labor rights we don't know if them would have turned a blind eye if it was the PNP so in my opinion think for yourself that enough to learn for you Jamaica is very corrupt when it comes to the political landscape anyway if you were as innocent as your portrait and you achieve your money by legal means. Anything TVG you want to ask, you're supposed to be able to answer with integrity. Because guess what? You and God know how you achieve your thing. And if you achieve everything we have by legal means, these questions shouldn't be so hard to answer. Because based on that, with me just watch, you look guilty as sin. But guess what? Looking guilty doesn't automatically equate to being guilty. But if you ask me the facts, I seem to evade a lot of the questions. It's questionable. Because when we say wholeness, go as far as black TVJ, the first thing people are going to think is that I'm guilty. But sometimes I'm not guilty now. Politics fickle. And anything we can't say in a bad light, you know, must be able to come back from it. Remember also, you know, so sometimes we can in a situation where we're not guilty, you know. But when the police them currently the house, the first thing is say, yo, I want to talk to my lawyer. Asking for your lawyer no means say you're guilty. You can't innocent and you open your mouth and you look guilty. And everybody that say, you're guilty. So holding is trying to bar TVJ not necessarily mean saying so that I try to hide something. Me just I make that clear. And me saying this no mean saying innocent either. We just I explore scenarios. It's not minimum wage that affects the poor is the minimum mindset we don't need politician for nothing at all stop blame politician for the downfall because most people just simply have their top priorities a lot of things we blame with leaders for we could have did help ourselves in that regard but most people prefer buy a weave prefer guy every party nothing can miss them them spend millions of dollars and at the end of the day them still never get a dollar yet you know why because the money where them are waste them are doing little little but they don't know that if them put all these monies together, they would not believe how wealthy some of them are. It's because them priorities are fucked up. I would not lay the blame solely at Andrew Wallace's feet. No, I won't. The people were dumber than Andrew, else Andrew couldn't get for them. None of them are say him though. And Jamaicans will never understand. Never. Why is there no laws? To put corrupt politicians in prison. You think them can do it? Now where did them change up gun laws, man? Now 15 years the least they get for a gun now. So why can't there be any legislative effort made to put these corrupt politicians in jail? Everybody knows that they're corrupt. But nobody cares. So not, now nobody in a parliament nah, do nothing because the entire parliament is corrupt. Andrew Holness' wife is House Speaker in a parliament. That is a clear conflict of interest and she still managed to get the position. Now, I don't claim to be a political analyst. 
who knows the inner workings of politics in Jamaica. But I know that if the Prime Minister is married to the Speaker of the House, who should rarely take part in debates, his or her job is to see that the members keep within the rules of the House and that the rights of the opposition members are met. Now, if the Speaker of the House is married to the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister have direct control over any outcome of any concern that the opposition might have in a position like this. And how she came to get that position there is another long story. All right, so I'm say for myself, as what I'm telling you, I never had a go on much of my opinion on that video there. I leave to the video entirely up to the item. So don't tell me in the comment section what you think, good and bad. See? So right now, I'm an athlete, but I'm going to do like Bolt and run.